guys, it's Morgan, and it's the first day of LeakyCon 2019 in Boston. Did you have any um, just as instinctive reactions reading the book where you're like, oh, I can't wait to play that scene or like that's going to be so much fun? Well, not so much for Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. You know, they called me back for Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Mm -hmm. And when that book came out, I remember I was probably one of the first ones to get it. And the one word that interested me most was crumb. <laughs> so I was like reading through the pages, you know as fast as I could marking and then I saw he had um, an important thing to say so I was like okay maybe he'll be back and then when they called me back I was super happy and then I was sat at the cinema when the movie came out and um, we never saw him Aww. but yes you, you filmed those scenes can you tell us a little bit about them yes now David Yates was the director um, for the Deathly Hallows uh, and he really liked the chemistry we have with Emma. So he decided to, well, you know, Crumb comes back at Fleur and Bill's wedding, and you know, everything that happened was there that we didn't see. Anyway, so a new story was created within the story. David Yates said, you know what, at this point, you know, in the story, Crumb and Hermione are kind of together. So let's get Victor Crumb involved in this. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> um, so, I basically steal her, I, I take her back, he never took her from me, so I just take her back, I uh, get her another drink, we do another dance, and you know, it was really nice, and it ended up being a too happy of a scene for a dark movie, this was the reason why they said they cut it out, so they cut the whole wedding out, pretty much. Yeah, they this put a lot of I feel like that would have just been distracting. Like, as a fan of the movie, I would have been distracted by what is going on with this relationship. Like, Hermione's back with Crom, distracted from Voldemort and all of the other big stuff that's happening. Would have been nice to have the spotlight on me then. <laughs> So initially to welcome you here, we wanted to share our favorite, our favorite memories or lessons from the series or maybe just some favorite moments from the past decade. But we realized that what makes this fandom so special is, that all, is what all of us have done with those things. We've had over the years a ton of creativity, celebration, empowerment, love, and most of all, community. We took these lessons and made them our own. No matter how important our relationship to the original seven books may have changed, or no matter how that relationship has changed over time, the values that we've taken from these stories continue to shape us. When you walk around LeakyCon, it's impossible not to notice these ideas in action, from the creativity on display during the costume contest to the, to the empowerment we feel during a Harry and the Potters con concert. It wasn't until Esther, our third daughter and our third child, um, was diagnosed with cancer when she was 12, that Harry Potter um, became even again such a big part of my life. She found the stories to be a place to escape, um, a place to find friendships online. And then 10 years ago, in 2009, she got to go physically to her Hogwarts, which was here in Boston. And it was kind of like the magic of the internet and 
the magic of the stories of wizards and muggles came together and came alive for her and created more lasting friendships. She met John Green for the first time at LeakyCon 2009, and that changed her life um, as their friendship developed and eventually led to The Fault in Our Stars being dedicated to her. Um, sadly, of course, Esther passed away in 2010. And um, it was a huge thing. You know, with all of her friends in 2009, they had planned to go to LeakyCon 2011 in, in Orlando together. We went for her. Um, she wasn't there. I had to finish reading all the books before I watched the last movie at LeakyCon when it premiered. But Harry Potter changed our lives. It changed Esther's life first, and then it changed our world forever. Now I'm all grown up. set with everyone, especially with those, actually with anybody, it doesn't matter if they were older than you or younger than you or your age, yep. um, who, like, what was the dynamic like, sort of not when not acting? Like, did you guys kind of hang out together? Uh, you... we, had, we had the green room, so um, all of the actors would go to the green room where we had a pool table, ping pong table, um, as much sugary drinks and sweets and crisps that you could eat, which I don't think was very wise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a load of kids in the green room on sugar, like being high from sugar, basically. Um, so, yeah, we had we had our times. I mean, I, I was I was quite um, I was always either in the green room or just on set. So I'd go down to set with the likes of the mum or uh, a runner, and and I'd just observe again, observe, watch, learn, um, people doing their things because it's a one in a lifetime thing, you know. And, and I think at that time. I'd look around and think not too many actors, when they weren't on set, would go down and just watch the likes of David Yates do his thing, and that was something I like to do. I did, I had a glass of wine, and I got, I, got a little, I got a little relaxation going, um, and then he's like, try to smile while you record it, which is, does, I know it sounds like some mm. guy told me to smile. <laughs> <laughs> a dear friend, so that's okay. He's like, try to smile while you actually record the thing. And it, that got a lot better. But then the second week, um, John, who'd always been incredibly quiet, incredibly reserved, just so, so, so not this person, I was like, why don't you come? Why don't you come and like discuss this with me? Maybe I need a second person. And um, actually, I think that's why it took us a while to put it out because that first one that I recorded, we ditched. That isn't the first episode of Pottercast oh, now. Well, we used to be called Cauldron Cast. Cauldron Cast, that's right. Cauldron It was going to be called Cauldron Cast. It's rough. <laughs> it is rough. And we were about to put it up, and I was like, this is rough. I, do, well, I, I want to listen to that episode, the very NPR, where you're like, today they've announced that they will be making a theme park for Harry Potter. I think I have that burned on like a CDR somewhere. <laughs> like backup file. It's not a floppy disk. Yeah, <laughs> might as well be. Honestly, though? <laughs> a zip drive. <laughs> when I watched the movies, yes, I was a Harry Hermione shipper, but that was just because of the movies, and... Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson have crazy chemistry. Um, and Bonnie Wright and Her um, Daniel Radcliffe do not. And so when they got, they officially got together in the books, I was like, eh. I, I wasn't like, okay, sure, they got together, but I just didn't feel it. That's because of the movies colored my feelings about it. Well, the movies really jip Jenny in general. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's just... <laughs> She knows how to tie a shoelace. Awesome. <laughs> that was the most awkward thing. 
think I have ever watched that theater with my parents. <laughs> and I mean, I walked into them watching Game of Thrones. So, you know, just that whole scene was like, 